Beatport Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Beatport Podcast. I'm your host, Tiger Light, and today we're having a chat with a real Berliner. Till von Zein is an experienced booking agent, a DJ, the label head of Tilly Jam Records, a producer and all-round nice guy with an earthy laugh and dry Berliner sense of humour. The interview took place at Beatport's Berlin headquarters, where Till came in and offered his down-to-earth pearls of wisdom learned over years of focus work within the music industry. So without further ado, Beatport presents a conversation with Till von Zein. So you live in Berlin? Yeah. But where are you originally from? I'm originally from northern Germany, um, close to Denmark, mm. which you know, I guess. Yes. Um, yeah, it's pretty much in the middle of, between Hamburg and Denmark. And do you understand any Danish? Does it trickle no, through? And I'm, uh, I never really liked that language, to be honest. Mm. Kind of sounds like someone needs to cough the whole time. When we they always, talk. yeah, we always make that joke in northern Germany. It's like somebody's talking German with a hot potato in his mouth. That's the way it sounds to us. Yeah. And yeah, well, it doesn't sound that sexy, does it? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it definitely doesn't. Um, so you've been based in Berlin for how long? Oof, wait, like 26, yeah. 26 years? No, since 2006. Oh, okay. 26, so like, yeah, 12 years now. Okay, yeah. and it's home forever, do you think? No. No? No, 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 no. no. Oh, what, well, where? I mean, never say never, but um, it's kind of, isn't it with Berlin, this love and hate that you, during the summer, it's like, oh, this is the most amazing place. And then like October, November, you think like, eh. and then November, December, it's like, okay, I gotta get out of here. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been thinking about moving so many times in the last four years. It's just so easy here, you know. Where would you go? <sighs> yeah, well, somewhere where the weather is better, <laughs> but a similar infrastructure, and I think that's that's kind of hard. I haven't found the right place yet, to be honest. There are certain places which I really like, and where I always travel. But the idea of living there, I think that's a huge step. Like going somewhere to visit, or actually living there. Um, yeah, well, let's see. I'm traveling so much, so I, I don't really complain. You've got time to do research. Exactly. And what about your studio? Is that in your house or I external? I have a little studio in my house, which um, I, I have to leave now because I just got my first kid. And I think uh, at one point, the little one is supposed to be in there. Um... <laughs> Yeah, but I go. I, I work with a friend of music, um, so I go there every week, and he has a proper studio, and uh, that's my my Wednesday routine. How old is your child? Uh, six months. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so how has that changed you and your workflow? Yeah, that's that's a real good question. Um, At times it's super easy going because he's super chill and I can just be at home, work on stuff, um, with headphones on or not. He's just so relaxed and I don't need to think about what he's doing. And then there is other days where of course he needs full attention. And um, I just try to spend as much time as possible with him. So, um, I get up super early now. I mean, I always did, but now even earlier to have more time to work on my stuff. Babies wake up pretty early, so when are you getting up? I then? get up like 5, 5.30ish, and he gets up like 6.30ish, so, <laughs> yeah. So how does that work with your body clock? You're, you're getting up during the week, or you know, when you're not gigging at 5.30, and then I'm guessing you're starting work at 5.30 or 4.30 or 3.30. On the weekend. On the weekend, depending where you play, obviously. I had this moment like 10 years ago when I first started touring, um, when I realized that I need um, a proper disco nap before going to a club. So I got used to early dinner and then go to bed and sleep. If I got one hour, sleep one hour. If I got four hours, sleep four hours, you know. And then um, going to the club, totally destroyed, obvious, where people think like, is he okay? And then it takes like 10-15 minutes and I adjust to it and everything is fine. But I couldn't do it without 
those naps before and yeah. So you do you always schedule that time in and make sure oh, yeah, your yeah. booking agent knows that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if I go somewhere and they're like, yeah, we do dinner at 10, I'm like, um, no, it doesn't work for me. Because I don't, I, I can't go to dinner at 10 and then go to the club at 12. Which of course people love, they invite you, they want to socialize with you, have drinks, blah, 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 you know. And I'm like, man, I'm really sorry. I, but we can get up early next day and have coffee and breakfast, but I guess you still want to go to the after hour, which I also don't do. I'm sorry, you know. That's interesting because exactly <laughs> what you said, I mean, a lot of music business uh, yeah. schmoozing can be done in those dinners before the show and, and people are inviting you and, like you said, wanting to socialise with you. So are you, like, really clean living then and when you say you're not going to the after parties? I stopped drinking seven years ago. Uh, I don't smoke. I'm, I guess I'm the super boring, stiff German DJ. No, but um, yeah, I'm I'm super healthy, and uh, people by now who invite me, they know it. So it's not this like, hey, let's do shots, buddy. Let's blah blah blah. Um, and I mean, some promoters really appreciate that. Some don't. They might not invite me again. Whatever, salavi. Um. But, but as I said, I, I prefer like meet earlier, go to a cafe, do like afternoon lifestyle rather than the whole nightlife because especially when you talk business at night, it's just stupid, you know? If you really want to talk like business with me, let's do it during the daytime, either before or after, you know, but not at night. Because 50% anyway, it's just like blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's, when, you, when you've been doing this for so long, it's just like in to the left, out to the right, you know. Well, what triggers you f stopping drinking? I've never been that heavy drinker. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've always been working. I always kept my day job. And there was a moment in my career when it took off, like when I started touring heavenly, traveling, blah, blah, blah. And um, the the person I run my business with, she became um, her first child. And she was supposed to go to the hospital, blah, blah, blah. And uh, she had another person who were supposed to take over her job. And um, like a week before, you date she called me like hey this girl has a burnout she can take over uh, what do we do and I'm like oh, well um, the only thing we can do is that I basically work your hours work all your stuff as well um, be at home be super focused then try to go on the weekend travel and um, I was like okay you know what maybe I just try to keep the weekends like super focused, super no alcohol, no whatever, just early flights home and work early on Monday so that I get everything done. And um, I started it and after like four weeks, I was like, hey, this is actually pretty cool. You know, you lose weight, you look better. People tell you like, hey man, you look good, blah, blah, blah. And you know, then you do it for like a month and you do it for a year. And at one point it's just like, hey, I didn't drink for a year, you know, it's like this ego boost in a way and then like, hey, I didn't drink for two years. And then at one point it's just like you can, uh, yeah, whatever, it's maybe also this male getting your goals bullshit, but I, I just like the idea of being the guy who tells people like, I don't drink, <laughs> you know what I mean? And now it's just, well, it's like I've never been drinking. You know, after a certain period, just doesn't exist in my my thoughts when you go to have dinner and somebody's like, yo, you want to drink wine, champagne, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I don't even know what that is, you know. How do you cope with when you're in the club and you've got really messed up people talking to you? I got those really nice earplugs with <laughs> great filters. So you just nod and, and smile. And I think I'm just super good at pretending that I have amazing small talk with this person. <laughs> but rather look on my Instagram feed. 
Oh, sorry, that was arrogant, but <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it always depends. When, when the person is um, telling me something really nice, not like you're the best DJ in the world, not that kind of nice, but something which is interesting, even he's super drunk, you can have a decent conversation, but when it's just like this typical bullshit club talk, like, hey, okay, gotta go to the toilet. And do you find that people still try and push you to offer you illegal substances or <laughs> It happened alcohol? in the beginning, but I only had it like a couple of times. And I mean, those are people who are just idiots, sorry, who can't be, who can't party alone, who always need like their little crew around them to, yeah, get fucked up with, you know? But, well, like I said, that's the kind of people that invite you maybe once and then they see, okay, he's the boring, stiff German guy, never again. <laughs> I, had, I had it once with a promoter where I was like, yo, can you just give me a water bottle? And then I opened it and I didn't realize that it was already open. And I was like taking it to my mouth and I was like, mm, this smells kind of weird. I was like, yo, this vodka inside. Yeah, of course. I'm like, yo, but I, I told you I just want water, not vodka, you know? He was like, yeah, but come on, we party, blah, blah, blah. And then took the bottle before, filled in some vodka and then gave it to me. I'm like, fuck, dude, this just, what's this, you know? Yeah, I guess some people also, if they're not comfortable with their own drinking, will be more comfortable when oh, other yeah. people are drinking around them. Yeah. You mentioned your business, which is Clique Bookings. Yeah, booking which I, I stopped now, but I've been doing this for 10 years, yeah. It's still running, but I'm not part of it. Okay. Yeah. And what was the decision to stop doing that? Well, okay, so I've been working with a bunch of guys for the last 10 years. Some of them, they, they just wanted to be on their own. So... Um, like a group of guys who also run their own label and they said like hey we want to have things separate like a clean fresh look we want you obvious to be on board um i was like, okay you know what we just start this new agency um which is your agency but the whole business part is still the same as before me doing it it's just not under the click banner so this is for the kind of music guys and it's called worldwide dancing club mm -hmm. and then while figuring everything out i was like you know what maybe i just start another agency for some fresh talent and some who were part of click before and um then i started that also and that's called the jam in connection with tilly jam your label is that under the same branding banner I never thought about that. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's stupid. I had like different names, and um, then somebody gave me the glorious tip: Hey, check if the web page is still available. And then I just realized all the super cool names I had. I didn't find the .com, the .de, the .net web page. Okay, shit. And then I was just messing around. Actually, I started with tillyjam.com, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, I like the jam. And I mean, there was a famous band back in the like 70s, Paul Weller. And um, the web page, I think, which domain was it? Yeah, .de was still available. I was like, okay, boom, that's it. You're now listening to Curtis from Till Fonzine's 1977 Love EP.
So now you're running two booking agencies, yeah. your own record label, and your own artist career. Yeah. And you're a new dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah Makes sense you're getting up at half five and not drinking. Yeah, you've, exactly. got to, you've got to stay focused. Yeah. What do you think um, the key things are that you've learned through running a booking agency about the music industry? Find the right people you want to work with, um, you can trust and definitely stick to them and not spend too much time with people that might give you a big profit but are just stressing you out. Um, if it's artists or if it's promoters. Um, I I went through a lot of experiences with artists that are just um, like demanding, complaining, just negative. What was the uh, most annoying demand that you can say? You don't have to name the, the artist. The, the, the biggest problem is like realizing, I, I mean, That's the problem these days, especially with social media and everything. When you do one record or you post one picture on Instagram or your one track on SoundCloud and there is 10 people telling you, you are the best. This is the best track of the year. You have the whatever. And realizing, hey, this guy maybe made the same comment on a thousand other DJs and I'm not the best and I don't have the coolest shoes and the best DJ mix and whatever. So focus on your work rather than go to your agent and be like, hey, I'm the coolest cat right now. Where are my bookings? Where are my shows for? Bum, bum, bum. This hotel, this airline flight, bum, bum, bum. Like just demanding, complaining about everything is not like all the other superstar DJs do it. You know what I mean? And that's just just a pain in the ass dealing with this kind of people and I learned that the hard way but pretty fast that I don't want to work with this kind of people if I make a million a year fuck it you know it's like I choose this because I love it otherwise it would have maybe worked in an insurance or a bank or you know but I, I choose this because I love music I love working with people and I don't like to work with people who are just dicks sorry and the same with promoters people who are just like demanding all the time and in the end it's just not worth it just because your artist has one show and then he will never contact you again rather stick to the people who who are in it for the same reasons you know so your your key lesson has been choose who you work with wisely yeah and what about this fresh talent label? Like, if there's someone listening who, you know, really digs your sound and everything you do and thinks, I would love to be represented by him, what advice would you give to them about coming forward and what do you expect them to bring to the table when they want to be represented by you? Definitely have talent first. Um, show that you're a hard worker. Um, that you're a decent person. Um, and that you have like a a vision for your career that's not like you want to be the next super super superstar because it will not happen you know <laughs> sorry but um yeah that's interesting you say it won't happen because it it could I mean yeah, you know could. if you look yeah, at yeah, but I think Goetta or something he started somewhere I mean not I'm not saying that yeah, he's the, the goal for so, everyone there is so much more going on to get to that level but if you if that's like the first step going to an agent hey I want to be with you and I want to be the next blah 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 and I'm like oh, okay show me your show me your records uh and then we can keep on talking, you know. But if this is like your first idea of approaching somebody, I would say... Mm. You want them to be all about the music and that's what it's about and not about being famous. Yeah, I mean, that, I know right now it's definitely... It's, it's different than it used to be. But I prefer working with people who are, like I said, talented, who 
know what they can do with their production or with their DJ skills. Um, and that's the main motivation to, to do it. Like, I want to put out great records. I want to play a great DJ set. Not, I want to be the next super, super, superstar. That's your motivation. I'm definitely not the right person for that. And when you say fresh talent, like, what do you expect for them to have as a body of work before they come to you? I don't mind if it's somebody who has put out his first records or no record. I started with one group back when I when I started with Click. They they sent me some music and they were like, yo, this is the first record we're gonna put out. Like, okay, you know what? This is not my style. I don't like it. I wouldn't DJ it as me being the DJ, but as an agent, I can say this is actually pretty good and it will be maybe successful and I would love to help you with that you know that's really German feedback by the way and I love it it's just this kind of brutal honesty of like I don't like (laughs) yeah this kind of like I really don't like your music it's not my thing but hey guys you got something going on never come on you gotta be honest (laughs) yeah yeah because that's that's like the worst thing you can do working with somebody and always blowing sugar up his ass you know what I mean yeah like if somebody's doing that's what I mean, you're not doing it the American way, which would be like, guys, oh, oh my yeah. God, you're the next best thing. But then in like six months telling you, okay, peace out, I got this new guy. And you're like, what? You told me like, I'm the best DJ on your roster and now? Yeah. yeah, I don't like that. I think like being honest is just super important. And uh, you have a very close relationship with Suol, as we talked before we started recording. Some people pronounce it Sol. It's S-U-O-L. Um, yeah. It's a label that you've worked with. Closely released two artist albums with in 2011, 2015. And um, yeah, tell me about this relationship and, and why do you keep going back to this collective? So it's uh, it's two guys who started that, Chapstick and John John. And um, it was super weird. I did a record back in 28, which was called Hank Mui, which is the main character of Californication TV show, which I loved at that time. And Chopstick contacted me. He was like, yo, this is my name. I just reserved the domain. You can do a record like this in a friendly way, but pretty straightforward. I was like, who are you, Chopstick, whatever, you know, back then he did music on other labels, a total different style, more like Electra House, um, and I didn't really take him that serious, you know, and then he was like, can you send me the record? I was like, yeah, sure, and I sent him some other stuff, and he was like, hey, this is actually pretty cool, do you want to work on music? I'm like, eh, well, and then I just saw that he also did other stuff with like Chopstick and John John. And he had this crazy studio, like, whatever. Yeah, like a proper, like, for me at that time, it looked like coming to the studio where Dr. Dre or Timberland are working, me being at home in front of my MacBook, you know, like, no gear at all. It was like, oh, fuck, it's crazy. And then we, yeah, we worked on tracks together, and he, at that time, just started a label called Balza. And, um... We did a record on that label, I did a remix for them, and then they had like a little fallout, and they started the label Suol, which is um, basically, yeah, Baza. They just took it, rebranded it, and um, they, they asked if I want to do an album, if I want to be their artist, blah, blah, blah. And um, I just... I just really like to work with them, kind of like what I said earlier about being an agent. It's people I can trust, people who do a great job, who are always honest. When I did my first records with other people, it was where, because all the other experiences were totally different. So I thought, hey, maybe they put out music which I don't like, but whatever, it's just, great people to work with and I'd rather stick to that. And they represent you for bookings, live bookings too, right? Not really. Okay. I mean, yeah, if it's like a label showcase, sure. So do you do your own bookings? I was with Click Bookings. Yeah. The the girl I was wanting it with, she was my agent for all the time. 
and right now I don't have an agent but I don't I don't really care because I have so much stuff going on mm -hmm. um, I don't want to play like eight shows a month I think I would just go crazy yeah, yeah. I mean this month you're playing in Miami Panama yeah, Paris you've played twice yeah. in don't Berlin this it. week <laughs> so um uh, oh, yeah, that's already see, six in no, in gigs in November I only play once I think so it's fine that's pretty exciting and playing twice in a week in Berlin is unusual that you oh, know, yeah, for yeah. clubs to book you like how, what, what was the story behind that I think the, the, like Sissy Foss they don't really announce lineups they don't really care I might be wrong, but that's the feeling I get. They they book artists they like, they don't announce it. So they they're in their own little bubble, which I really like. None of that politics bullshit. If you play for me, then you can play somewhere else in the next three weeks, blah blah blah, you know? Um so yeah, and the Suicide Circus I haven't played there in like eight years. I have no idea. But the guy who does the party, he asked me and there is one of the, the guys I work with from Kind of Music playing there and another artist which I really like and I was like, hey, this is a cool lineup. I, yeah, I want to be part of that. Say 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 EP, this is Shadrach.
Just going back to your releases, thinking about your connection with Suol, your Say 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 EP was released on your own imprint. Mm. So if you've got this, you know, super amazing flowing relationship with these guys, what was your motivation to start your own label? I never wanted to do a label. Like, I never thought about doing it. I had some, I did a lot of music in like 2016, 2017, which was just piling up at home. And at Seoul, I only had like one slot to release an EP, um, which is three max four songs. And then you have like 20 songs where you think, uh, so I gave some to other friends and I had some releases planned, but then it didn't work out. One track was lying at home for like one and a half years. And I thought like, hey, this is just stupid. I could put it up on SoundCloud for free. And I talked to some people who've been running labels for like really long time. I thought like, yo, just do it yourself. Like, what do you mean, do it yourself? Yes, you start your own label. Like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> and then I met with, yeah, with people um, from distribution who I knew from back in the day, blah, blah, blah. And I realized, okay, it's not that much of an effort to put out the first record because I knew somebody who's working at a pressing plant. Um, yeah, so I basically had all the contacts and I just um, I just tried it. Like, I'm like a little kid, okay, let's do it. What's next? Bum, bum, bum. And everything worked out pretty okay. And yeah, but now it's also, I'm at a point where I'm like, okay, I did four releases in the first year. Um, now, slowed down a bit because there's just so much stuff with the agency and I also want to work on music you know so it's not my it's not my main focus it's more like a like a hobby on the side if I if I have music or somebody sends me nice music hey let's do it so you're looking to release other artists oh yeah yeah of course nice but I don't want to be in this like scheduling every four weeks of release you know like how do you compartmentalize with all these different projects? Like, how do you um, spread your energy and time across the booking agency, the label, <laughs> the live gigging, and then the writing? Like, oh, what's the percentage split of your focus and your time on each thing? Yeah, that's also a really good question. Um, I go to the studio once a week, work on music. That's. I really need this as like escape from all the work bullshit. It's like my Wednesday afternoon, like four to midnight and then work on stuff. Um, but besides, I'm just, my main thing is the whole agent work. Like I, I do that every day, long hours. Um, and then in between when I find some time, I try to um, take care of the label or look in online for new music, which I might want to DJ on the weekend, which in the last one, two years has been really, it's been kind of tough to find the time to look into music to play. Cause you know, I mean, I'm sitting here at Beatport, <laughs> <laughs> like just starting to look into new music and then you get lost in all the genres for like an hour, two hours, three hours, end up with like 10 songs you wanna play and think like, fuck, just spent like three hours looking for music. In the meantime, I could have done so many other things, you know? Um, so there is always this lack of motivation looking for new music. There's which... gonna be DJs listening going, but that's your job. I know, I know. <laughs> you can't complain about that, that's yeah, digging. It's, I know, it's stupid. Digital and digging. It's, the funny thing is I always end up looking for hip hop R&B music then, which I listen to at home while working, you know, afterwards. Um, yeah, so. My, my wife just told me like, hey, we need to do like like time management for you now with all the new stuff. And I'm like, what? I'm, I'm not really good at it. Maybe I am. Maybe other people tell me like, yo, you're brilliant at it. I for myself think like, I'm, I'm not really good at it. I just do what's on the plate and then do the next thing, you know. 
When you said you go once a week to the studio, is that your friend's studio? Tiger skin. Oh, okay. okay. We st- it's, it's the same thing like with Chopstick. He heard some of my music when I first moved here and he, it's kind of funny, back then he was uh, running a label and he was like, hey, you want to release some music? I was like, yeah, sure. And then he, he told me like, hey, I can do like a proper mix down because um, your shit doesn't sound that good. I'm like, well, thank you. I know. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> German. German. <right? laughs> oh, but it's uh, good you cut through the BS. Yeah. <laughs> Get to the point. It's more efficient. Yep. And um, yeah, we just then we started doing like records together. Like I was working on stuff at home. Went to the studio. We finished it. Did some records as uh, Till Von Zayn and Tiger Skin. And at one point, I just realized he doesn't really want to play anymore because he was kind of fed up with with traveling, going to clubs, blah blah blah. I was just stuck in work not able to finish my music the way I want to finish it and I was like yo you know what you don't want to play I want to work music let's work on my stuff what kind of deal do you want to do like how do you want to want like credits money blah 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 and we found a nice way and ever since we just work on my stuff together sometimes it's like I bring old ideas sometimes we start from scratch it's and it's like two old men <laughs> meeting for their hobby you know what I mean except you're getting to play all around the world yeah and he gets some money from sales and well yeah. that's perfect a lot there's a lot of uh, producer and and I mean you obviously you are a producer and a composer but there's a lot of like producer DJ teams that do that oh yeah so you know if that's working creatively that's amazing I wanted to ask you about your say 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 EP that yeah. came out on the 24th of August there's a track on there called Shadrach yeah. Which is the Shadrach. name Sadrach, which is the name of a Babylonian god of the moon, and in the Old Testament is <laughs> the Babylonian name of Hananiah. Which I of course read and thought of while given the name. Well, this is I was wondering if there was like because in the press release you're like yeah if you guys want to know more about the name go and do some research. So I was like okay well that's a carrot. Um, I wondered if you can tell me about the concepts behind that name and the other <laughs> titles or were you just playing with us? I just, um, I had this idea on the, um, I think on the second one that I gave. Um, the second track? No, the second Tilly Jam, sorry. Tilly Jam 002 where I thought, you know what, I just choose track titles that are linked to some influences or tracks that really shaped me so there was a uh, one track was called she said <clears throat> which was a famous famous whatever which was a track from the far side the hip-hop group from the 90s one track was called chronic which was the album by dr j shadrach is a track by the beastie boys on their second album paul's boutique which um for me is a masterpiece and I just the, the track is uh, it's all just like samples layered and has this old like late 80s kind of break beady funk vibe and I was like okay this is like like something the Beastie Boys would have used for Paul's Boutique and then I just went through the track list and I, I always thought, hey, this Shadrach track was the dopest track back then. And I just thought the word, the word looks so stupid, especially to German people. They're like, hey, what's that, you know? And yeah, it's... And then I read afterwards where, where it's coming from, and I was like, oh, please, but I didn't want to change what, it. What, it was from the Bible? Yeah. Yeah, Ugh. I was wondering, my question was then going to be, are you religious? Not at all. <laughs> it's a much cooler story that is linked to the Beastie Boys. Uh, yeah, well, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm not from the Cali family. <laughs> <laughs> and you say as well in the press release that you dig in for lots of samples. Um, yeah. Where do you dig for them? Everywhere. Everywhere. Always, all the time. I, I don't go to record stores, but I spend a lot of time on, on YouTube, on iTunes. Just lose myself in music.
You're listening to Stevie from Till Von Zine's 1977 Love EP. What do you feel when you call Stevie? is super melodic and musical really warm and really joyful music thank you um <laughs> are you i know i really love both of the eps um we're going to talk about 1977 love after this which is the other ep that's just come out were you musically trained do you play no. piano no i always loved soul and funk music because i grew up with with rap hip-hop r&b reggae and all of that is, of course, based on old funk and soul and jazz samples. So um, I think I'm the perfect product of listening to new music, which is based on old music, who the new music, finding the old music. And um, I always thought, hey, if I if I work on music, like back then when I, before I started producing, I always want to make music like that. So still, still do it that way so 1977 love um is this in any way dedicated to your parents seeing as you were born in 1977 so i think it's they they sent me the the number of the label it's it's i think it's the soul the 77th seven, release yeah yeah I was, oh that's cool um because i think back then i had the 22 which is my birthday, and then this one I called like 22, 277 or something. I was like, okay, now I can just go on with that joke and uh, call it 77 something. And then I was just like writing combinations down and I'm looking at 1977 love, like super kitsch, whatever. So I love it, <laughs> let's do it. And the guys at the label said, all right, that's cool, and yeah. And there's a, isn't there a track also called Love on the EP? Actually, yeah. no, there's Curtis, Stevie, Don and Pepe. There's no track no, called Love. No, there was another track before, sorry. 
<laughs> Ocean Love was on the compilation, I forgot. Too many names, sorry. Too many tracks, no, that's cool. <laughs> With the names, Curtis, Mayfield, Stevie, Obvious. Wonder. Pepper, Braddock. Don. Blackman. Oh yeah, I definitely need to change that. You mean for the next release? Yeah, I give like proper names again. Yeah, but it's cool, you've got a concept <laughs> running through. <laughs> You could do a religious one and have Matthew, yeah. Mark, Luke and John <laughs> harking back to the Babylonian yeah. god of the moon, which <laughs> Shadrach from the Say 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 EB. So there's some wicked Calypso percussion on Don. Yeah. I was wondering which areas of the world you draw inspiration from when you're writing. I wanted to do a track which is, um, which is a little bit Afro-ish, but not the obvious 2018 Afro hype house sound of the season um and it's from i forgot the original artist i got it on my phone i couldn't look into it but i, I don't want to name it now it's um the sample yeah it's just this percussion band i think from ghana you remember this track finder by nine toes it was like a huge hit it's kind of like in that genre so there's uh the percussion sound for yeah okay so did you get in contact with them and ask them no, no. okay who, <laughs> they're not what? listening what who? <laughs> they will never know it i guess they're dead already it's like from i don't even know like early 70s or something Got a couple more years before it gets cleared of copyright yeah. well hopefully they won't listen to the <laughs> podcast then <laughs> to be honest that that sample on pepper that's like super obvious that's tony braxton tony braxton and kenny g it's like the worst track you can imagine. If you were listen to the original, you would be like, really, did he sample that? And I think some people know it, but they forgot what it was because it was a huge radio hit and like... Yeah, there was a comment on the SoundCloud mid link. Mid-90s or Someone something. Someone had picked up on it, I think. Yeah, I mean, Tony Braxton was big back then and Kenny G as well, but... It's so out of context, most people will not realize it, I guess. Do you not worry about like no. somebody coming in? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, yeah, I mean, that's the whole hip hop spirit. Like, I always, like, the first release I did was a vocal by Justin Timberlake. And nobody would ever guess that it's uh, Justin Timberlake. Um, and there is other samples which I use that are so obvious that now, like 10 years later, I think, oh man, I was such an idiot to take it. But back then it was just like fun. And that's that's the whole part about like doing music for me. If I, if I find something which I like and I want to use it now, I use it. I don't, I don't want to think about, hmm, can maybe in a year time, somebody will knock at my door and be like, hey, you gotta pay us, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that shit doesn't sell anyway. You know, there is no money in in those kind of tracks. So, And if there would be somebody asking, I would be, of course, giving him the money he deserves, you know? But this is like underground, deep house music. This is not like chart topping, whatever. So you're going for the never apologize, never explain way of thinking with it? No, I, I, there is a German way of saying which I just forgot. Don't wake up. Sleeping. Yeah, something like this. You know what I mean? Dogs. Yeah, something like this. Just so, yeah. you know, yeah. just don't wake them up. <laughs> <laughs> You're also playing in Cape Town and Johannesburg in December and January, but the dates are like a month apart. Are yeah. you gonna stay there for the month? I always go there for the winter. Um, I started doing that like. I mean, I went there the first time 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago, 25 something. And in the last 10, 12 years, I go there every year. And uh, yeah, for like two or three months. Do like, you have personal connections there, family or? My grandparents, uh, they went there during the 60s um, for a couple of years. And my dad, um, when he, f like my dad also was working a lot. And we never went on holidays. And the first time we went on holidays, we went there. Like 20 years after he lived there. And he fell in love again. There was just like after appetite when Mandela got elected and things changed for the good. Well, not for the good, but for the better. The, for the better, yeah. obvious. 
and um so and back then like property was just dirt cheap it's still if you compare it to europe but and he bought a house there like the late 90s so it's just super easy for us because yeah so you're gonna go over with a little one yeah and my mom and you know like bring friends like two years ago we had like lovebirds david mayer john john now uh, black loops will come and it's yeah do you think you're gonna do some writing did you do writing with them I back always, then i always work on music when i'm there because that's pretty much the only time of the year when i'm really relaxed and uh, off the grid mm -hmm. for longer than a weekend mm -hmm. but the thing is like all the, the friends of mine that come there they just want to go to the beach stay at the pool eat and don't want to think uh, about music yeah. what do you take with you as your portable setup usbs Oh, you mean to produce music? Yeah. Just my laptop. I have like a like MIDI keyboard there and headphones, which I always leave in the house. But just my laptop. So I when you're writing, then do you just work inside I work, Ableton or? Whatever? Yeah, I work lying in the hammock with headphones at night when it's quiet. That sounds like pure hell. I'm very uh, yeah, sorry for you. Yeah, that's why my music is so <laughs> dark and negative. Yes, that's, that's it. That's why your music's so joy joyful. And it is full of sunshine. That is really, that is what I took from, from both of the EPs. I, I felt yeah. like my, my house was full of sunshine when I was listening to them. Um, so, yeah, how, please. How can a German be like that? Yeah, well, it's obviously <laughs> South Africa's influence. So please keep going. Um, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. If you haven't heard the EPs, Say 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 was out on Tilly Jam on the 24th of August and 1977 Love came out on Sue Ol on the 20th of July. So check them out. Coming up now, we've got On My Side by Adriano, released on Soul Notes.
Doug Gomez with Higher Love.
You've been listening to Alpha Centauri by Black Loops out on Neo Vinyl Recordings. The last track today is from Till Fonzine from the Say 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 EP. This is Baden Powell Doctor.
You've been listening to the Beatport Podcast in conversation with Till Von Zine. I've been your host, Tiger Light. See you next time. <laughs>